Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 42 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And today I'm going to cover how I made this cute little bolster, bolster style pillow. Hello, Tina from Dayton, Texas. And I don't want to mess up your name. I think it's Anisha from Arizona, what fellow Arizonan on the feed today. Speaking of that, Amy, also known as Better Days, is painting her apartment or house. I'm not sure which one. She sent a little note to let me know she wouldn't be in the live feed today or might not be. I think that's sweet. And uh, hello, Jessica from Southeast Georgia. Man, even though that's really close to me, <laughs> it's not easy for me to read. I think they try to make the writing as teeny tiny as possible. Hello, Lorinda from Hood River, Oregon, and Donna from Ocala, Florida. <laughs> Oregon, not Oregon, Lorinda. <laughs> so how are you all today? I was going to be so ready, and I know you hear this from me a lot, but today, one of the software programs we used to go live said, would you like to update? And I had three hours. So I'm like, sure, absolutely. Something I try to do, update, restart routers, you know, make sure that nothing is on the Wi-Fi. So we have a really smooth start and, and show. And uh, all of my cameras then, it wasn't recognizing. <laughs> and it took pretty much all of that extra time that I had to get really, really ready and made it all about setup. But I managed with just a little tiny bit of time left over to uh, select fabrics that I might use. And I, I'm not sure if you guys were watching last week when we talked about the bolster and I was talking about how my son has, has uh, made his ulna nerve go numb on his wrist from his mouse. And so I thought I would make him one of these little bolsters to rest his hand on while he works the mouse, which I think is going to work really well for him because he because he said, you don't understand. My keyboard is like the whole desk and it's a very serious thing for him. <laughs> so I think I think he has room for this. And since it's his, I was selecting he had selected some fabrics for me once and he goes, you should use fabrics like this. You don't do enough guy fabrics. And I was looking for them because I was wanting to make him something out of those fabrics since he selected them. And it was many years ago, but I think he would remember. Another thing that he really likes is he likes jungle themes. And I just so happen to have this lion fabric. And it's got blues in it. So, but now, you know, can I capture the whole face? in that I don't think so but this one has little tigers on it and yes I know that's a tiger not a lion <laughs> I don't know the tigers show up and there's a fox what do you guys think I think I'm going to use the this one, even though the tigers won't all show up, but it has a nice, it does gives you the, give you the option to utilize several different fabrics. You could use one, two, three, four, five, six. There's got, is there six? There's only six in this. So you have six fabrics. So you could use six different fabrics for this, or you can use two alternating as I did with this, but this is a boutique that has a bunch of different colors in it. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out with not batik. I so seldom do it, it seems. <laughs> this is kind of cool too. It's not girly. So maybe, maybe these two together. That's wild. <laughs> he loves green as his favorite cut, one of his favorite colors. I really like this, but 
it's almost like cool. <laughs> what else do I have? Ah, don't overthink it. That's the voice in my head. I mean, this would be nice to do just the whole thing out of, but that would be boring. Ooh, this one. And here's the thing, you know, you can make these as big as you want. I did design a pattern and the main important, the most important part of doing this, if you wanted to know that this will be inside of the school in the Fabrically Speaking live group. And I made, I made one that will make one considerably large so that you could have it maybe to put your feet on under your desk or a cat bed or a doggy bed. I think that my, my dog Tinkerbell, if I made her this one, would actually use it as a bed. So think about the size of the item that you're making and then what print would work best. I think I'm leaning toward. Are those two different? Everything in me is screaming, no, they're two different. But they came in the same. Maybe the three of these together. I'll give you guys a look and you guys vote. I need your help. You got to help me vote. What do you think? Should I do these three? And, and or I'm leaning toward these two. I don't know. Oh, decisions, decisions. Tina, help me. Hi, Susan from Laughlin, Nevada. All right, enough of this trying to figure it out stuff. I think I'm just going to have to make him something out of this one, though. Maybe a hot pad. I don't know. But this remaining few weeks of the year, gosh, that's just astounding. I saw this meme today, and this girl goes, there's something about November. Every November, everyone goes, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's November. How can it be November? Like all the months that came before did not exist. And somehow it just all of a sudden is November. But do you kind of feel that way too? I thought it was hilarious. I, I really did start laughing out loud when I saw it. My niece shared it. Okay. And what I decided I was going to do is every week I'm going to kind of give you something that you could make as a present for somebody on your shopping list so you don't have to shop. And since I don't have a huge amount of the of the fiber fill that goes inside of one of these, I'm going to keep it simple and make it small. And I believe I did this big of a piece and I could rip this one apart because this was my first attempt and I didn't make it right because it didn't close up in the middle. So what I was saying before is what you're aiming for is for them to have a quarter inch seam allowance at this point and that point so you don't end up with a hole that you have to figure out what to do with. But we will be using a button and if you want it to be completely soft then you can get a fabric covered button and match and make a fabric covered button to add even more fluff and uh, padding to your little bolster pillow. So I'm going to choose. I have a feeling it's going to be wrong. So this is my first draft of the pattern. I could just rip this open. That's wrong though. This is the right one and I'm not ripping this one out. Hi, Shirley and Jessica Conley. You like the blue and green ones together? It's still sitting here, so I can still 
So you're saying I should leave the polka dots out and just do the blue and greens? It's just so not me to, to mix these kind of fabrics together. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. Just not normal for me. I keep waiting for you guys to talk back. I feel like that's wrong though. Oh, we're gonna see. So you could use the cutter pillar and trace. Or you can cut your pattern out like I'm doing here. I think this is going to be, I don't know, we'll see. It's so funny. I really was going to have like a couple made so you could see different sizes. actually kind of a theme for my show though isn't it designing patterns as you go I love how what I throw there just vanishes out of the set so you guys don't see it as long as what this is when I'm done looks good so I don't waste this fabric this is my button box I, I got it at uh, a Hobby Lobby and there's a bunch of buttons in here. We will save that for the end in case you're wondering what this box is. So if I'm going to do three fabrics, then I need two of each. I really like this one, but it is going to be small. I love how intense this one is, but, and then you put it with this and it's so muted. Oh, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to worry about it. You know, the thing is about my son is he's got this incredible ability to see the flaw in everything. So we'll see what he thinks. A quick way to do this would be to pin or place all these fabrics on top of one another with, since the pattern is the same no matter how you lay it down, you just need to lay all your fabrics down on top of one another and you can cut it all at once. I always like that when that happens. Trying to save as many lions as I can. I think I bit my lip in my sleep. Have you guys ever done that? I woke up and I feel like I got a little swollen lip. There's something you didn't need to know. Tigers, not lions. <laughs> Maybe the eye will show up. Don't worry about it. Just got to make sure that the one on top is going to govern. Doesn't this seem a little girly? Not if I get some tigers in there. Hi, Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell, you want a ride? She's like, who are you talking to? I don't see anybody. There's a tiger there. Be so cool if it works out perfect. Now Chase is here. <laughs> Oh, he heard his name. Hi, puppies. I wasn't really talking to you guys. You know what it is, is I took out the 
the biscuits. And I plan on giving them some today after the show. And I think they're wondering what happened. Did she forget? So I've just set them all down on top of one another, making sure that this one is on top of that one so that the pattern you can do this with a pin take a pin and poke through to show your outside limit of that pattern and just pin straight down through and then you can flip it over and see that and see that it is going through all three of your fabrics. We'll see if I get away with it. You like the dots? I'm doing this. I'm com I'm, uh, I'm I'm committed to this. I can always make another one. I think last year everyone got fabric bowl cozies. I was thinking about showing you how to do a platter carrier warmer for bringing food. Oh, I really need, I need some new uh, rotary cutter blades. Oh, you know what? There was nothing wrong with that. I just tried to cut through a pin. So that blade probably was fine. And now it certainly is not. <laughs> That's because I'm reading as I'm cutting. You get to see me do my haphazard method of cutting. Are you guys ready for Thanksgiving? What are you talking about? It's only November 4th. I definitely ruined that blade. I think I made a promise I wouldn't do this kind of thing anymore, but I failed myself. I have this really cute little couch that I made for my cell phone. And, and then I searched around and I saw people were making cell phone cozies or stands with rice. And I just kind of set it aside. But I used fabrics like this because it felt like upholstery. And, and I still really do love my little couch for my cell phone. So I think I'm going to make it into a pattern and show you guys how to make a cell phone sofa for next week's Fabrically Speaking Live. <laughs> and I'm planning, instead of inking live, to actually release some videos now that my studio is set up and working so well. I really should iron this. No. <laughs> the cord was wrapped around something and it knocked over a bunch of stuff. This is the comedy hour. You guys are quiet. I have too much under my feet. Hey, 
Hey, guess what? I have music if I need to step away. So when I have to walk out and get something like my stuffing that I'm going to need for this, you guys will have some music to listen to. You're welcome, Jessica. I really do love spending my Thursday afternoons with you all. This is the last Fabrically Speaking Live that is going to happen in this time zone or what is this called? This is called Daylight Savings Time. No, we're going into Daylight Savings Time. But I don't change. Hope I didn't scare you by waiting too long to say about the time zone. I paused for a minute because I was trying to figure out how to say it. And instead, I made it sound like I'm not having the show ever anymore. And I'm not doing that to you. I have every intention of continuing with the show. We've had so much positive remarks and barely any thumbs down in the YouTube channel. So that's a good indicator that you guys are enjoying what we do here. So a couch cell phone holder. If it's for a guy, you could just make it with guy fabric. And you can make it bigger to hold a tablet. I never thought I'd ever use a cell phone to watch a show, but I have. And when, when you do that, it's nice to have it stay upright and not have a chance of getting wet in case you're in the kitchen or taking a bath or you have a water cup around and you spill it you can use terry cloth to make one you can put vinyl on the bottom to keep it from getting any water on it but that's next week's this is this week's i'm already designing different options and if all goes well i'll actually be ready for next week's with extras already ready that's the goal i think it'd be a great gift for everybody in my family you got your hoops today amazon is moving our stuff really fast all right the last thing i did was free motion and i actually finished my thanksgiving platter i'm going to bring that for thanksgiving even though it's not my thanksgiving and since i am supplying the turkey i thought i'd bring it and then go ask my sister if she'd like it to be on the table when the turkey comes out of the oven and she's going to learn how to sew so maybe i can get her to to make something by showing her how cool that is. And what I used was the pebbles design. I dropped my fabric. <laughs> so now I'm going to pull this out. They're like a bunch of eggs. Every time I say egg, I think of my friend Rosa from Appliquick first time we met <laughs> or no not the first time we met but first time we really had a nice time going out to dinner together I guess it really doesn't matter so she says every time she goes to the store you know, she would fly in from Spain and she would go to the store and she would ask for eggs and she goes, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. People never know what I'm saying when I say it. And uh, she said, Uggs, Uggs, instead of eggs. Just a little bit of a different enunciation. 
And we spent a good hour and a half sitting on couches in New Hampshire outside of a restaurant. We had a really good time. All right, so it really doesn't matter as long as you don't have the same fabrics side by side. Or if you did have the same fabric side by side, you would simply have a a bigger portion of that fabric and then a bigger portion of that fabric. So it really, since there's an even amount, right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance. The satin edge foot is the foot that I use for quarter inch seam allowances. The satin edge foot, I had one out here. Did I do that? No. Oh. Satin edge foot comes packaged like this if you don't already have one. And it is a reclosable container that you open. And inside is a little instruction booklet that teaches you some of the techniques that you can use this foot for. One is how to set it for a quarter inch seam allowance. If you have it and you never opened it and you thought that was just a piece of paper, now you know it's not. It's a little booklet. We do have a book, a 208 page workbook and two hour instructional video to go with the feet. And each of the feet come with adapters and then the foot. So the foot has a seven millimeter wide bar. That does not mean you cannot use it on a machine that has a nine millimeter wide bar. It just means that you'll remove your machine's adapter and replace it with ours. And then our adapter snaps on to that. This is the Singer Slant adapter, which makes it go on your Singer Slant and makes your Singer Slant able to use other seven millimeter snap-on feet. Let's see if I have a foot that they made. It's like this is this machine's foot and this is our adapter and it snaps on. Isn't that cool? Although with our satin edge foot, you pretty much will fine you don't need very many feet that came with your machine at all if you have a Bernina machine they have more than one option they have this snap-on adapter and it snaps on like that and if you have uh, an older Bernina you'll use one of these these are called low shank adapters and what it is is it takes has the post and you can put it up and then it has a little screw like everybody else's machine has and then you're able to slide our smallest adapter up and under the screw and tighten it down. And now your Bernina is a universal seven millimeter wide snap-on foot machine as well. And last week I was using my Octi hoops and when we use the Octi hoops, we don't use a foot at all. You can use a foot, a free motion foot if you want, but I prefer not to, and I did not need to for quilting my placemat. I don't know what I just did with that foot. So these are included and they go in to the package. Whoops. <laughs> Oh, things are flying here at Creative Feet. And then you can close it right back up again so that you always know where all the parts are for your satin edge foot. I don't know. Oh. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is set it for a quarter inch seam allowance, this little wire. Wow, it's so bright. I changed a setting on the camera and I think it's brighter than it ever was. So that little wire in there is where the edge of the fabric always is. You place this off the edge and you can go around curves and it's super easy. Now this whole project is really just two layers of fabric. So an 8012 universal needle is adequate. And if you're into garment sewing, then that'll be the needle that you'd use a lot as well. Unless you're going to do 
top stitching on really silk fabrics or silky like fabrics, then you could go even smaller in your needle. If you do go smaller in your needle, you need to go thinner in your thread. From the 8012 needle down, once you go below that, you really should be going down to the Invisifil or the Deco Bob thread. So this is fine for 40 weight. The 8012 needle can handle a 40 weight thick thread. And that needle does have a little burr on it. It's not unusual for me to hurt my needles by doing silly things unintentionally. Oh, the machine's not even on. That's why the lighting is, is off. Forgot to turn the machine on. I might have set the light on that camera too bright. Oh, well. Hi, Mary from Mary or Mike from Buena Park, California. Welcome to the show. I'm sure if there was no one in the school wondering how to get into the chat. So if you are watching inside of the school and you've typed and I haven't said hi to you, then you're probably watching inside of the school which is possible. However, I can't see your chat until after I'm done being live. So if you want me to see you on the bottom of the video inside of the school, the screen is set to a certain size. And down on the bottom right hand side, there's this thing that says watch in YouTube. And you click on that and it'll take you to YouTube. In order to chat in YouTube, you have to be a member of YouTube. You have to have set yourself up so that when you type in someone's video, you are transparent. We know who you are so that you don't do damage to somebody's live feed. If that makes sense to you, I hope it does. If you are in the school and you're trying to talk to me, come on over to YouTube. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. All right, now let's just test the pattern. To sh I'm going to show how to set that quarter inch seam allowance for those of you who have not already seen me do it. Where is my measuring tape? I don't think I've ever lost my measuring tape. It's gray. Of course, I have a whole bunch of them, you know, the little ones where the little button and it retracts in. But they're not in here either. And my son's not here. Oh, there it is. As I say, my son Vincent's not here. I can't blame it on him. When he was a little boy, he took them all and he would, I go, where's my measuring tape? And he'd be like, you mean this? And he really enjoyed how they retracted. Howdy, Sherry Walters. Where are you, where are you uh, watching from? So here we have the measuring tape and you take your needle and you place it on one of the lines of the measuring tape. And then you move the wire on the satin edge foot over to the quarter inch mark. And that is what I'm gonna do here. Lower the foot. Wow, so I probably can not use this light. That's so bright. <laughs> oh, I guess I shouldn't worry too much about it. That's so bright. I need to turn that light off somehow. Let's see. Oh, well. The software got updated. The cameras got messed up, but the software got updated. Twin Falls, Idaho. Welcome to the show. So I'm going to select a left needle position. In order to achieve a quarter inch, you need to move the needle over to the left. Oh, I remember I can set the light in my, inside of my sewing machine. 
because it's easier to control this light. Something about the, the sewing machine light makes the camera do weird things. You may not see it, but I will on the replay and it'll bug me. All right, so I'm taking my needle, I moved it to the left, and now I'm lowering it down on the measuring tape, not in it, but over it. And make sure that that needle is hovering right over the line and then you move the wire by turning the nut until the needle or until the guide wire guide pin moves and is over the mark that's one quarter inch away from where the needle is you can also use that for top stitching and edge stitching and pin tucks hi eve from northern california which part of northern california Putting my measuring tape back where it belongs. Now we're going to bring these fabrics together. And I want to sew from one quarter inch distance away all the way around. And since the guide is set one quarter inch distance away, I won't have to think about it. Yeah, put my glasses on. Where are your glasses? There they are. San Jose, beautiful. I haven't gone to California now since 2020, or 2000, yeah, 2020. It was my last trip through down Highway 1, up Highway 1. I miss that. I, I used to do that drive every year. I like to start in on the fabric and come back off of it. Watching right here, don't watch the needle. We wanna keep these fabrics together and just keep going around, keeping that fabric touching right there. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. What we always do when we sew. Try not to push down on the fabric. We're pushing toward the foot, not from behind and in front, but pushing toward the foot, just a light touch. Definitely want to secure the beginning and the end of a, a very stitch. I'm using whatever was in my machine, which was a 40 weight, and it is the Polyfast thread. <laughs> and I'm like, I probably should have taken that thing apart. Look at that. What could we use that for? <laughs> now I'm going to use my presser. And I think I remember preferring to flatten my seam can't remember. Should have made more of these that day. I also cut terribly. You can see here how it has that quarter inch. So when we do our last one, we have to make sure that you don't leave it open at the top that you leave it open in the middle area for stuffing how was the show how was the international quilt festival i miss you guys a lot i really do I just don't miss the whole process of doing a show. Not one bit. I'm loving having this show every week with you guys. and But I have not forgotten about doing an event for you. I went back too far. <laughs> have you been to the International Quilt Festival be before, Eve? And if you have, how did it compare? And if you don't want to tell me in the chat, you can... Send me a private message in the school. I would love to know. 
Here we go. One thing I can say is I think this camera, it used to kind of go black in between when I would change and now it doesn't seem to do that. Sometimes we think too far ahead, thinking all the way down here that has got to be lined up, but really we need to be paying attention to where it is at the foot itself. So kind of peek. See, here's the thing. I accidentally designed that bolster. I, I started watching here and I messed up. And it's mostly because I have a piece of batting tickling my face. I gotta find it. It's just a normal experience for me. So now you can see it is half of one, so it's working. This is, I remembered right. Well, I hope that you had a wonderful time despite not all us vendors being there. I think I saw my, that Rosa from AppleQuick ended up going. She wasn't in the list of vendors the last time I looked, but then I saw her show that she arrived in Houston. I have to mute, I'm about to cough. Sorry about that. I try not to get my head in the way of the camera. So go back. Once again, always keeping your eye looking there. Don't look down here like I did that time. Keeping the fabrics together right at that spot. Try not to stretch the fabrics at all because you're going all the way across the bias on this which is partly why this works so well for what it, for what it ends up being. I don't know what's making me cough. Taking Tinkerbell to the vet next week so we can find out. I just, I hate to medicate her, but she's been sneezing. And the other night, it was all night. So I don't know how much sleep I got that night. But I felt bad for her more than for me. What do you guys think? It is working. Even though they're so fabrics I would so normally not put together. I feel like something's wrong with it. Those three fabrics. Oh, I, sh I wasn't, some of you, one of you probably was going, no, Claire, don't do that. That's wrong. So I got to rip that out. It should be, am I wrong? Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, because that should not be there. They're too close to each other. <laughs> Uh-oh, where's the seam ripper? I so rarely need it. Hey, I found where that needle threader is so I can order it. So I'll be adding that to the site soon. Where's my seam ripper? There it is. Never ever Rip out a seam if you need glasses without your glasses. Make sure you have them on. 
so you don't cut through your fabric like I was about to do. That's where you got your octi heaps and the magic, you call them the magic feet. Sometimes you can get away with just kind of ripping the thread, but not in this case. This is 40 weight thread and the fabric's sewn on the bias. So if you rip the thread, you're just going to spread the fabric and totally distort your piece and probably end up having to cut another piece. And I did not intend to sew the wrong piece or I would have had a different color thread in the needle and bobbin. can't remember which I think this fabric was on top so that means this is the bobbin and you want to pull on the bobbin and cut the needle so a quick way to to do this is to cut about every inch on the needle thread and notice that my seam ripper is sideways okay so far away so I have the, I lay the seam ripper sideways. Okay, I'm getting congested. What did I do? I was all ready and went out to put our sign on the door to let delivery people know not to ring the bell. And a spider web was right there. I walked right into a spider web. Hello, JC from Brazil. I really enjoyed that Long Beach Quilt Festival. Gave me an excuse to go to the beach. We have leaves on the ground up here. It is officially the fall change of colors up in Prescott, Arizona. And my pear tree is just, so it has every color of leaf every color you've ever seen in a leaf all in one tree and the next door neighbor has a a red maple some kind of a maple anyway forgot now it's time to pull the bobbin thread Try not to talk too much about myself and what I'm experiencing when I'm live. <clears throat> I have to mute myself. unmute oopsie oopsie sorry about that I forgot to unmute I thought I hit it it looks like it's working now it wouldn't be a week with me where I didn't mess up on pushing the buttons I pushed the button too fast or maybe, I don't know, maybe I pushed it too hard and turned it on and then off again. What was I saying? Oh, I was saying that I just can't tell you how much this changes how you feel when you're sitting at your sewing machine. It's, it's, it's so nice. I wish I needed it at my desk. 
but I have a pen style mouse. So I don't have to, I don't have that hyper extension experience you have when you're trying to get up and over your mouse. So that's what not to do now. I'll finish this thing. I should already be done. It takes less time to sew it right than it does to rip it out. This is wrong. I ripped the wrong one out, you guys. You let me do that? Is my brain just not working? There's a, two the same. That should not be happening. So this should not have been removed. I removed the wrong one. <laughs> ah! You know what I'm going to do? Cannot believe I did that. It's because I was sneezing and coughing all of a sudden. I got to blame it on somebody besides me. Don't watch Claire today. <laughs> oh my goodness. How embarrassing. If you're just joining us today, this is the November 4th of 2021. This is the satin edge foot. And I'm using it for a quarter inch seam allowance, sewing on the curve. This being one of the easier curves. You can also use this for inside curves for doing drunkard path quilts. And this is this would be almost done if I didn't just mess up on the order of sewing my fabrics. Thank you, Sherry. Give me the human excuse. I still have to rip that one out or I can just not care. Can I not care? I don't think I can. It's not in my nature. <coughs> so let's see, what can I lecture you about? <laughs> <coughs> Do I lecture? Let's see kind of conversations did we have this week that I may be able to bring up oh one of the things that came up this morning is someone is sewing someone is sewing beads on and she didn't like the choices she had at the fabric store that were pre-strung so what she did was she went to a store that sells beads that are what's called loose beads and they string them on a string but they're not officially strung <laughs> they're more for you to take off of the thread that they put them on and then to uh, use them for making jewelry and other things. And she made an attempt to sew them on with the string that they provide, which is uh, a nylon filament, kind of like our fishing line, but a lot thicker. And I would not recommend sewing them that way because they stretch. You'll see this topic in the school, by the way. And I did answer her questions inside of the school. And she also sent a private message because I think she was probably thinking, oh man, maybe I should have made that not a public post. And I highly recommend and want you guys to always publicly post problems you have. I know it sounds crazy, but I really do because someone else is going to do the same thing. There's so many of you now that are members of the school. So for those of you joining us today, this is what I'm making, this little bolster here, and it's for putting under your elbow when you're doing things like crafting. You can make them as big as you want and use them for whatever you want, but that was what I first thought of when I made it on accident when I was designing a pumpkin. And the pumpkin is on our Fabrically Speaking Live playlist. If you want to make some soft sculpture pumpkins for your Thanksgiving table. So back to the bead discussion since I'm trying to kill some time as I have to rip out a seam. <laughs> if you're going to do pre take beads and string them yourself, you need to make sure that you go all the way around that first bead and tie it so in a way that it can't move on the string at all. 
and then you can start adding your other beads beside it. And remember that at some point you're going to have to finish the end. So make sure your threads that that bead is on are really long so that you can tie them off underneath the fabric and maybe bring it into a hand sewing needle and stitch that in so that it doesn't come apart. Also, the thread that you should restring them on is our lingerie thread found at creativefeet.com. It is made from nylon, but it is fiber instead of filament. So it is stronger and more flexible and softer. And it won't melt with the iron, so you don't have to worry about that. If anything's going to have a problem with an iron, it's going to be the bead. So I thought, well, maybe I should do a video showing you guys how to string your own beads. But I'm not going to talk about anything except for this right now, so I do this correctly. So this is the furthest away piece that I need to do that one. And I'm going to really think it through. And then after that one, I do this one. And then after that one, I do this one. And that way none of them are touching one another. So that's the order in which I should sew them. So it's kind of cool to watch somebody else make such a terrible mistake and to do it twice so that when you're home doing it, you know you need to pay more attention. You might even want to put a clip on, you know, like post-it notes and write one, two, three, four, five, six. So you don't have any need for your seam ripper. My Halloween was not as busy as I would have liked. I have way too much candy. What I want to do is donate my candy. But I kind of feel like it's... It's not really good for anyone to eat it, so <laughs> there was somebody else feeling the same way. I think it's because it was Sunday, because last year we had a lot of trick-or-treaters. I had so many, I didn't have enough candy. So Saturday is the, de the best day for Halloween. In our area, we only do trick-or-treating on Halloween. How about yours? Did you guys have enough trick-or-treaters for your candy? I'll tell you what, all our neighbors, we had really great displays and everyone was like, well, that was kind of sad. Not enough trick-or-treaters. And I sit there and the older kids came by and I was like, you can take four each, but I still felt like there might be more. And I really just should have just said, take it all. <laughs> I went through my closet and I'm, I pulled all my old or clothes that I don't want anymore and I'm going to donate them. And I figure I'll do the candy at the same time. Someone was suggesting like retirement homes. But I don't know, man. Do they want to do that with their teeth? Is this, doesn't seem like this is going to fit, does it? I just didn't want to take for granted that I was right. So, after being wrong twice. So, what is on your sewing table? I ask this every week and I expect you to answer. Whether you're still, whether you're making it or not. If your table is empty, well, say, hey, mine's empty. <laughs> Are you guys starting to get into the spirit of the holidays yet? Or you still need a little kick in the tush? And are you disappointed if I don't make more holiday themes and continue with this gift ideas to sew? Because you know what? I do cater to you guys. This is the one where I have to make sure I leave room for stuffing and it's hard to believe this is even going to work at this point and the reason I sound unsure is because as I mentioned before I cut what I thought I needed to do to make a pumpkin and then 
it didn't end up being a pumpkin shape. So I went, well, that's a fail, but oh, I absolutely love it. <laughs> and so I didn't really pay attention to my shape that I cut. And after I confirm that this is it, then the pattern will be confirmed and available in the school for you guys to print out. So you don't have to try to think it through. This is where I should have pulled all the threads I ripped out away. Should you ever rip out a seam that you cut on a curve like this and sew wrong, you should use spray starch to shear it back up again. It'll kind of shrink it back up again. Another thing I should have done and didn't do. You want to finish a king, a queen sart, that's better than a king. <laughs> You've been trying to clean off your table. I'll tell you what, I should pull out my quilt. Okay, so this is the last one and I need to make sure that I have an area to, to stuff it. And I wanna put it so that it's on the bottom, not on the side, right? Not too close to where the button is either, but not right here because that's going to really be obvious. So if you think of which side is top and which side is bottom, although it's kind of uh, either way, it's that either or kind of design. Looks cute this way or that way, so you don't really have to worry about which way you use it. There's going to be some hand sewing involved. If I can skip it, I do, but I don't I don't see a way around it and I'm really not sure how I did that one. I think it wasn't done mathematically correct and I shoved it in the middle. And then I really had to work it to get it to close up. And that's when I went, "Oh, well, makes sense that you would need this point to be a quarter inch seam allowance for all pieces where they meet or it won't work. And so I believe I've done that. Never want to have it start at that particular point where the button is, but I'm trying to think of how much room I'm going to need at least two inches to uh, stuff that all the way. And I'm going to do what I think I should do, which is not start where the button is. Start a little bit out from there. But if I'm going to put a button there, then, then if it's not right, then no one will know. I wish I could hear you guys talking. I really want to see if this works, so I'm going to sew. like an inch out cut making sure you reinforce that now two inches up notice I planted my fingers so that I didn't distort it reverse And that instinct to press your seams as you go is hard to resist. I think I, it's stronger if you don't flatten your seams this time because we're going to really stretch this fully. And I don't think it's really going to affect the look of it in any way. It's that, lot, that last one. Where's that opening? How did I lose the opening so quickly? Oh, come on. Where is it? There it is. Oh, I was expecting it to be at the top. So I don't remember worrying about the seam allowances.
drive this camera too far away. It looks so little. Using one of my pressers to just kind of see how well the point is. Nice thing about a live show is you don't get, I don't get to edit. <laughs> so you're going to see if they all come together. See how it all comes together and it's closed. And if they're not absolutely perfect, well, you're going to put a button there. Okay, this is me. I get to try out the the new music while you wait. And it's not going to be very long. I hope it's not too loud. Be prepared to possibly want to turn it down. But if you don't turn it down and, and it's not too loud, it'd be great to know. So I am now going to transition to our new music while you wait. It's not going to take very long for me to go grab the bag from around the corner of my table. <music> It's nice to get to try that out and I can hear in my ears so it didn't shock me which is good but I have myself set relatively low so that I don't drive myself crazy while I hear myself talk and I was thinking another alternative to, to using a button is to make like a knot out of yarn for the top. I'm probably going to stick with a button, but this is the polyfill, the fiber fill. Poly standing for polyester, so it's never going to rot away or decay like a cotton might, will. So if you want sustainability or long lasting, I was also thinking about making this and having the fabric be backed with batting before doing it and now I'm glad I didn't but maybe for a big bolster size for your I still got to test all these sizes I don't have enough fiber fill to do the biggest one so just take little bits at a time don't don't try sticking this size in there all at once it, it won't be you won't be able to form it and make it not lumpy. Try not to lose the opening. <laughs> Mary. Oh. You must have let your fingers sit down on the number six key, Mary, because it's... Uh, 
There's a message from you with like a 30 number sixes. <laughs> and YouTube blocks it. They think you're a, a robot. So in case you were worried about everyone seeing that, no one saw it, but now everyone knows you did it because I told them. <laughs> it was your puppy. Aw, the puppy wanted to participate. So those of you who have puppies in the house, let's share what kind of puppy you have. Tell me while I stuff because this is, see how easy this is, you guys? And it's, I think it's even before it starts to really form, it's already so cute and so effective. So you can go buttonless <laughs> with this design because it's, it's sewn. So Jessica, have you already selected your fabrics for your queen size quilt? How far along are you in the planning stages? Talk about this much longer and I'm going to get smacked through the computer because there are people waiting for me to quilt my king size quilt that I've been working on for what seems like forever. And mostly because I don't like take it out. That's my block and I'm going to leave it out so maybe I can remember to make it. <sighs> Me and batting, I tell you. Do any of you have the same problem when you use, work with batting? Do you feel like tickles? Maybe I'm allergic to something in it. Every type of batting, though, does the same thing. A Yorkshire Terrier. My little Yorkie is a Jack Russell mixed with a, ja with a Yorkie. She's asleep on the chair next to me, if you don't already know that. Hi, Fiona. Fiona, did you get my message? If you want the items you ordered, we can ship to Australia again. The shipping has been dealt with. So we were able to ship worldwide again. There was a clog in the process. So this is, a, this is like the first time I've ever mixed such contrasting fabrics together in anything. I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a short thing because I'm almost done. So if you guys want me to do something else, give you a little bonus time at the end of this. Because this was really a, a very simple project for me to, to teach in the first place. <laughs> Except for now you can see how easily you can mess it up by sewing the wrong piece in the wrong order. And that is the point of me. I mean, I've been wanting to make my own quilt. I almost was done and didn't have enough fabric. They didn't sell it anymore. I took it apart, started over, added more fabric. Because I love the fabric so much, the base fabric, that I didn't want to just quilt that and make it a throw for the couch. And I have my quilt wall leaning up against the wall but I need to mount to the ceiling. So I'm inches away from getting to the point where I can do that. How much you stuff this is up to you. And it's definitely hard on the hands. So using the presser to form. Not bad for 
remembering what I did. Don't have the exact same shape. It's close though, isn't it? It's hard to tell. This fabric's so bizarre. Maybe a top V will help. I guess it is. It's probably because I need to put the button in. And the reason for the button also is to get that squishy shape. I guess it is. You guys have all sewn a button on before, haven't you? <clears throat> I'm going to pick it, though, because it's for my son. So I'm thinking the manly button. This one is kind of a gray color. And when we sew, we're going to sew the but whoops, <laughs> the button all the way through to the other side. And so that pushes or squeezes it together. <clears throat> Sorry about me clearing my throat. See <clears throat> there. So here's a fabric covered button. Oh my. Is there two of those? This is not all of my buttons. <laughs> there just happens to be a cloth covered button in my thing, and it actually kind of goes how perfect that is it's like I planned it I'd like to say I planned it <clears throat> if there's just one more in here that would be the best and you know I don't really do I I think I may have a button kit to make your own cloth covered buttons Oh, this one's cool, too. Speaking of it being for my son, except for it's actually leather. I wonder what that came off of. But that's that's big, and I don't know how it would feel on your elbow. This is the kind of decision that I shouldn't spend that much time on. It's not that important. And really, to, to achieve this, you just need a really long needle. <clears throat> and it has to be able to fit through your uh, the hole in your button. I think I'm going to put cloth button on the top. <clears throat> and... I'm going to give it one more. That's it. And I'm going to go with the leather button on the other side. And he can figure it out when he gets it. Maybe. <laughs> it's so hard not to do the same thing on both sides. I can't do it, you guys. It's for my son. He's going to go. That was lame. <laughs> putting two different buttons, <laughs> buttons on there. I have to have two that match. Come on. Do you guys need me to show you how I sew my button? These go. And this way the thread can be part of the decor and I just finished getting all the information for my son for our denim or jean thread this would be a great opportunity to use that thread because it's so much stronger and muted 
and <clears throat> I'm going to do this one more time. I'll be right back because I don't have any of the denim thread handy. So I'll be right back. to figure out which color thread to use. Thought I'd give you guys a glimpse at all the different ones and this is the button I've chosen to use. It's a brown button. So whatever color I use is going to contrast with the button on there. And this is denim gold. So if you ever tried to hem your blue jeans? These are the two colors that are most commonly found on blue jeans. And it's the same thread used by manufacturers. I think I'm going with green. If I'm going with green, I have two greens. Okay, guys. They call this one soft green and this one seafoam green. So type soft or sea. Both greens are in these fabrics. I know I like the fabric button too, Donna, but I only had one. Whoops. I'd also go with that and not have to decide which green. Here's another option, variegated thread. You can see the different types of variegated. So if you're interested in making your own blue jeans, we have these, but there are lots of uses for this. In fact, it's what I use to applique with a blanket stitch on the center of the quilt square hanging in the middle. If so, if you look for that video in our Fabrically Speaking Live playlist, then you can see how incredible the blanket stitch looks using that thickness of thread. Okay, I loved, I loved the C, but the soft was my first choice as well. So I'm going with that. I always feel guilty taking anything from stock as if we can't replenish it. It's not like we only had one, but I don't want to ever imagine that because I took something, you guys didn't get one, but you had to wait for it. So one of the things I do when I hand sew, and I'm not an expert at hand sewing, I never would claim to be, but I don't like it when my thread can slip as I'm sewing. And we're gonna go through the thickness 
of this. So we need a, a relatively long one in order to do several stitches and make it look good. And if I use two layers, well, then it's even thicker. So what I do instead of threading it through like that, which is just one layer through, <laughs> pulled the wrong end. <clears throat> you kind of have to decide before you begin how long your piece is. And then you take the loop through. <laughs> Don't have my glasses on. And I've cut it to length. Then you pull that through. And now it's attached to the needle. So the needle won't slip. That means one thread won't start to slip and tangle up with the other thread. Then I tie a knot. I'm going to take this through first, coming up from the inside and then up and out. Whoops, come on out. Come on, not. <laughs> and I'm going to go through those two threads again. So an anchored, I'm really anchored to that. And that's because I have, a, I didn't sew perfect, so I don't have a completely closed on this side. And that'll give me the ability to pull and close that up. And I am gonna do that again. So this isn't the button so much as the stitching. can't believe I'm hand sewing on film or live. Any of you really good hand sewers? I apologize. I'm not trying to look like I know what I'm doing. For the most part, I rarely have to hand sew. But this time, it is necessary. All right. So I am going to secure that with a knot. Sometimes I do this. I take the back of the needle, come backwards. Now there's, that's held together without the button, but now we're going to take that button. Go all the way through to the other side. Sorry, this close camera is really close. And I'm going to go through again. Guess I'm going to need to. It's too small. This is too far away. The other one's too close. And what we're trying for is to come out with the button but you can always just find your way through to the center. There we go. Now this is when it gets its form. And I need to secure the other side as well. <laughs> These are the easy things, but... Hello, Sylvia from Kissimmee, Florida and Pecola. I think, I can't remember Pecola, where you're located. Are you in Australia as well? 
So I'm really pulling it tight. Isn't it pretty? Oh, I love it. You know what's cool? Is the button actually gets dropped in to the bolster so it doesn't really get on your elbow. I need to do that same thing now. Pulling these fabrics together. It's not about the button. So I'm pushing down as I pull on that. If you were using a regular weight thread, you'd be at risk of breaking that. Ugh. See, now I'm fond of it. Oh my gosh. Oh God. We got a troll. I hope that that's done doing it. It's, it's usually not a person, by the way. I deleted the message. Hopefully you guys aren't seeing it anymore. <laughs> guess there could be worse trolls. So glad I looked when I did. It's actually a sign that we have good traffic watching right now. Okay, now to take and bring in the other button. And so you don't have to go all the way through. Oops, wrong one. Darn it. Because I crisscrossed. So once you secure from this side to that side, and it's pulled in already, now you don't have to have any more length of thread. If I was trying to tie this button off by going all the way through, I would have needed a considerable longer, considerably longer piece of thread. Does that make sense, you guys? Can somebody please chat something? Say anything. I feel like the chat broke. And sometimes you end up with not enough length of thread. So that's when I come back out. And I've taken this in I've tied a knot and I've taken it in and I can hand tie that. Thank you guys. <laughs> you guys wrote anything. I meant you can write anything. <laughs> Is the troll back? No. It seems like anytime there's anything really good, there's already there's always someone. It's trying to ruin it for the rest of us. I still have to hand sew this, but I'm not going to put you through the misery of watching me hand sew that. But I can leave the length of tail inside of it. I still want to tie it. So I left, I had about 12 inches of thread. I would say I would do 18 to 20 inches of thread so that you don't, have any risk of not having enough thread, but I could have also tied another piece of thread to the end of it. And tuck that inside and hand sew that in. And I say that uh, I got a little gift for my son for Christmas and maybe he can, I'm not even gonna wait for Christmas because I want him to heal from doing the damage he did to his nerve and I dropped my thread. 
This is only an hour and a half. I usually take it to two hours. Isn't it cute? So how's that for designing something from my mind? Almost the exact same size, slightly different. What do you guys think? What can we use these for? This is what I do to take pictures for, for ads. And I don't do this enough. There we go. All right. I'm yours now. What? What should I do? You wanted me to show you the elastic straps. Here's the thing. I've shown it many, many times. And until I do something large, it's just not going to impact you as much. And I think I did it five episodes ago. But I have them handy. I literally never don't have them. I have... I have something that's kind of large. This reminds me of being at a show and I would just rip things out of people would ask something and I go, oh, okay, and then have it. And this little girl goes, do you have a Mary Poppins bag down back there? Because, because I just kept pulling whatever anyone asked me for and, uh, and so here I have a quilt that's larger, not big, not as big as a king size, but it's bigger than a square. Maybe one day I'll need it for a grandchild. I'm really interested to try this, this thread for quilting, but I don't want to do it live. And I'm not going to do it on this. I could do it live. Do you guys want me to see if the denim thread will quilt free motion? I don't think you've ever said no. Never put this too far from me, Nana. I can't tell you how much better my elbow feels at the end of a show from having that. Oh, gosh. I cannot keep things on the table. I was thinking of playing around with the variegated jeans thread on a quilt. So I may as well try it now. And then after that, because I'm only going to do a little bit of it, this is why it pays to be in the chat. You guys get to ask and receive. After I do that, I will show you how I handle, how I use the quiltlets with the Octi Hoops. And I'm putting it on my lap so I can't forget. They're both octi hoop things after all. This reminds me of being at a show because this is what I would usually quilt on at a show. And of course, there's batting. I have a, a large hand sewing needle not in its spot. Okay, an 8012 needle? No, can't do that. This is uh, way too thick a thread for an 8012 needle. Got to go to a 9014 at least. Trying to remember what I did. I say a top stitch needle.
And the reason I'm going with a top stitch needle is it's it was designed for this thing, for this exact purpose, for allowing a large or wider in diameter thread to go down and be picked up by the hook without it getting nicked by the hook and having it scrunch up, which we call shredding. It's okay for being late, Allison. The pressure thing. Sharon, you're saying something about the pressure thing. <laughs> Are you talking about pre presser foot pressure? The presser foot pressure is used when you when you have to deal with different thicknesses of fabric. I'm not going to use any pressure setting right now because it's irrelevant when we're free motion. Pressure is the amount of push your foot has from above against the fabric and the fabric's feed and the machine's feed dogs. So if your fabric isn't feeding through, your pressure could be too tight and it could be too loose. If it's too loose, the feed dogs are just sliding off the fabric and then you have the ability to move your fabric too much and it can make for a really hard or a very difficult time sewing straight. So if you have a hard time sewing straight, and you're not using our satin edge foot, you probably, you may have your foot pressure set too low. If you have a disc on the top and the thing that pops up and down and it's all the way up, well, it's the lightest pressure your machine has. So you wanna push it almost all the way down. It's like one third of the way sticking up is average or normal pressure for those, those types of machines. I'm trying to find a top stitch needle. Come on, top stitch needle. Maybe I didn't put it away last week. I was ready with my super universal needle, but not my top stitch needle. There it is, 8012 top stitch. I was gonna I was gonna alphabetize them and have like little tabs sticking up so that I don't take this long to find my needle each week. Could be that I don't have 9014 top stitch needles in here. Do I have two 8012s? Hmm. Here's the thing, it's not gonna work if I don't get it. Another 8012 top-stitch needle. Three packs of the same needle. I don't need that many. I could swear I used it recently. Well, you know what that means. <laughs> it means I get to play you some music again. Okay, come on, brain, kick in. Be right back.
right. I've got... I really should put these back. But I don't know how many years I've had those. So Sharon, did I answer your question about regulating your pressure? Is it the, are you speaking about with the hoops or were you talking about the foot when you're sewing regularly? So I wanna make sure I do answer your questions. Sorry, in case I'm, you know, not getting your, your real question, don't hesitate to to ask again, go, not that kind of pressure, this kind of pressure, you know, it's, there's a lot of terms used in sewing, which are almost identical, but mean totally different things, like a ruffle and a, and a gather, gathering and ruffling to make a ruffle. And both ruffle, both ways of make a ruffle, but they're not the same thing. One's gathering and one's rough, one's, what's the other term? Ruffling, yeah. So I'm going to take my... Let's see. Should I show the other thing first? No, because you know what? I'm trying to do this so I like it when it's done. Picking it back up so I don't forget. I don't know if the uh, chat's broken or you guys just aren't texting or chatting. I need your help. I need you to say something. All right, I guess you guys left and no one's watching anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm taking the presser foot off because I'm going to do free motion with the octa hoops. And the octa hoops come three to a set and you receive handles that go into the hoop and make it so you can write with our hoops on your quilt or on other fabrics. Thank you guys. It's bad enough I can't hear you. Whenever I use the octa hoops, this is when this is really important because unlike other methods of free motion with the octa hoops, our elbows are down. And I'm going to use two frames, one beneath the hoop or the quilt and the other one on top. And then the handle drops in. And you bring the two frames together with your non-dominant hand. And then with your dominant hand, you draw and you rest your body when you do it. If you can't get your elbows down and, and, and be able to rest your body, you probably need to push your machine further away from you because your arms are possibly longer than mine. Mine are really short, so I don't have to be that far away from my machine to rest my body and it's very important to rest your body when doing this i'm not just saying it so i gotta remove my machine snap-on adapter loosening the screw and removing it So you've had our satin edge foot since 2007. <clears throat> it's so funny. I had a little story. I'll tell you. But this lady on our video, <clears throat> excuse me, on our little one minute commercial that we have running on Facebook for pearls and piping. And she goes, I took a zipper foot or a uh, invisible zipper foot and ground out the bottom and made my own pearls and piping foot. That's my invention. <laughs> and she said, and she'd done it years ago. And uh, I said, well, I invented this before the invisible zipper was invented, so. And uh, 
We have a story with that. The inventor of the invisible zipper actually asked if he could package our pearls and piping foot as the invisible zipper foot because people were having a hard time using his foot. But I thought it was ironic that I like the ingenuity in people. But not everyone knows about us, you know, even though we've been around since 1989. I said, I decided on a unvarigated, what did I do with it? There it is. Is this side solid? Yeah. I think I'm going to quilt. I've got to get to the thread dispenser. Definitely want to feed this thread up through a stand. It's too thick. It'll drag too slow through your machine. If you were to put the spool on it, and have the machine spin that spool around. Sometimes I will, <clears throat> when I work with a thick thread, I will bypass that last thread guide as well to reduce the drag on that thread. One of the neat features of this thread is that it is muted, or, or in essence, does not have the shine that you get from an embroidery thread. And they, it's, it's, it's rate or graded differently. This is a 40 weight polyester. This is a Tex 40. And it actually is at least twice, maybe three times thicker than 40 weight. So the numbers don't always make sense on our, on the thread. <clears throat> Hi, Diane from Alaska. So first I'm going to try to see how well it does using that. This is a top stitch 9014 needle. It has a bigger eye and it has a special design in the front and the back. And I'm not using my machine's needle threader because I don't want to break it. This is when this hand needle threader comes in handy. It has a little hook on it. And if you take it, I gotta use my magnifying glasses. <clears throat> So the hook is on the bottom if I use my left hand. So you go through the needle. These are going to be on our site very soon. And you just pull it through. Much easier. It's a really, really small little hook on there. Okay, so this is the first time ever. This is the thickest thread I've ever tried to free motion with. Whoops. Well, that was an accident. I was just trying to lower the foot. So this is how you normally lower your foot. This machine has a button that I can push, and I'm not, I'm not good at it. I mess up sometimes. This is another day of messing up. So I'm not using this thread on the bottom, though. That would be too thick for the bottom. In fact, lingerie thread would be the best thread for the bobbin. I don't even know what's in my bobbin right now. But I want to be able to really see this, so I'm going to have this side up. That shows up good, doesn't it? Look at that. We got good light. So the larger of two frames beneath and the smaller one goes on top and then you bring the corners together and that moves the quilt together. Then your hand is actually resting on this, on this frame, resting right there. And then you hold on to the pen like handle and you draw so your, your hand. If your arm is resting, on the quilt over here, you won't be able to move the quilt. So I usually make sure that it's like lifting up so that my arm is resting on the surface of the machine instead of on the quilt. So that's what I'm doing. First time ever, I'm going to release the thread tension because this is so thick. It is automatically tighter tension because the tension discs are closed on it. And if they weren't, the thread would just pull through the needle. But you can see how the needle is bending as I pull on it. That's how you know your tension is holding the thread. 
Now, my thread tension on the needle is normally set at a four on my machine. So I'm going to take it down to a two. And I still don't know what's in my bobbin because I just don't remember what I was doing last. Can't get the bobbin thread up right now. Let's just see if I can get away with it. Ooh, I can feel it like, ooh, it's not happy. So I'm quiet because, well, I'm doing something I've never done. And theoretically, this is really hard for your sewing machine. But oh, that tension's so tight. I'm going to go all the way down to one on the tension. Come on, make a stitch. <laughs> or any of you going, there's no way I'm doing that. <laughs> it's, it could also be in part because the sewing machine needs to be seen by the mechanic. All right, so it's too thick. So this is what happened. It got caught down inside of the inner workings of the machine. I'm not giving up though. It's not in my nature to give up that easy. Next attempt is to put a foot on. Oh, I can find it. I found the foot. Love it when things are where I think they should be. Remember, whenever you use a free motion foot, you need to use a screwdriver to tighten that foot down. And also the needle. Because that foot will tighten that or loosen. It can unscrew your needle. If that's happened to you, make a note in the comments. I am going to be at least nice to my machine <laughs> and bring the bobbin thread up. Looks like I have lingerie thread in there, which is what I'd recommend. My thought is I was able to applique with this with a blanket stitch. I should be able to do this. <laughs> There's another thread in here from another project. Oh my goodness. Has it been that long since I cleaned this machine? I feel like I just cleaned it. Oh my. Or that is this thread. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I was losing it. All right, but it is a little dirty, so I'm going to clean it out. So the foot will hold the fabric down better. And since this is super hard, and I'll explain why it's harder for your machine to sew thicker threads. The thread actually has to go underneath your bobbin case, by the way. So there has to be room for it to do that. That's one thing. So when the thread goes, when the needle goes down, it goes underneath your bobbin case. That's why we can't make a bobbinless sewing machine. My father and I tried to make one. And after we, you know, I say I don't give up. We finally gave up. The only machine that has only one thread is the, whatchamacallit, the Shashiko machine. So we could actually make a bobbin in the sewing machine, but it wouldn't be a lock stitch. It'd be a chain stitch like the, wow, that's like the thread that's on a dog food bag. And it, un it comes off real easy. So this, this will aid in the functionality of sewing. Maybe I didn't need to go that low on the tension. 
I'll see. I'm going to try the bypass. So I have taken it out of that last thread guide. Ooh. Sometimes you just have to go slow and it's okay. So what I have is zero, one tension and a foot, and I'm going sideways. So the, the anatomy of the sewing machine needle makes a difference as well. And I did slow. Now I'm going to see how fast I can go. Ooh. <laughs> you definitely don't want to go really short on your stitch length because it's so thick. So it's variegated thread. That's why you're not seeing it right now. That's, I guess, black. Now it's coming into the teal again. Ooh, I think this is so cool. Look how big it is. So this is thicker than that than quilting cotton thread. And the problem with cotton thread is it rots. So this is polyester. Oh my goodness, isn't that awesome, you guys? Aren't you glad I decided to explore? So this is definitely like when you're first learning free motion. You might not like your stitches. So quilting with a thread that shows up this much might be, might make you never want to quilt again. So that's why I recommend you start quilting. Oh, this is working really well. I lost my train of thought because I'm too happy. So slide. And this is how we move around. So you can't order it right now, but you should be able to order it any day. Look at that. How fun. Okay, I'm gonna... <laughs> I don't wanna stop. Should I do a feather? Let me just do a little feather. A feather is done by going up first on the stem. So you're deciding where, or the shape of your feather. And I would normally come back down on it, but it's too thick a thread. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna give it a, a gap in between. So if we were talking about pressure, I'm not pushing down at all. It's very important not to push down on these hoops because it'll make you, it'll stick to the sewing machine. They glide. I'm not really pushing down on this either. My hand's resting on that. That's about it. And elbow on my little cushion. I'm going to show you the front for a second so you can see my posture. And I really should be wearing my glasses. I'm totally forgetting what I'm doing. I don't want to do that because I was doing a feather. So I didn't do a normal feather so that I'm going to continue to do what I just did. But this is how I am sitting, resting, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. In a moment, I'm going to show you how to quilt something larger using the quiltlets, which are elastic straps and safety pins that we offer at Creative Feet. But if you have elastic straps and or elastic and safety pins, you can make your own set right away. Basically, if your elbows are down, it's hard to handle a large quilt because the quilt has weight and you'd be normally grabbing your quilt and carrying it around as you quilt, which is really, really bad and strains your hands. So the elastic straps carry the quilt for you so that you can move and the quilt is being carried by these larger muscle groups and you can become unconscious of the rest of the quilt. And I'll be showing that in a moment. Putting my glasses on, where are they? There we are. This is cool that it's showing up so well. It's the first time black fabric's shown up, nice. So it's a little one and then a bigger one. 
can't see that at all. Definitely would be easier for me right now if this were all one color, or at least not going into black. So definitely not a good option for the feather on this fabric color. So if you can draw a feather on a piece of paper, then you have the same posture or hand positioning, hand on the paper, hand on the pen that you would have if you were writing on paper, except for we don't push down or have to squeeze. You don't have to squeeze this either. But you normally would squeeze a pen and push down. You don't have to do that. So it glides and it makes, I forgot the little one on the inside. So it makes it a lot easier than writing on paper. In fact, I can tell you I'm honestly better at quilting a feather than I am drawing it on paper. Hands down. And I would do a, a more realistic feather or better shaped one if I was saying feather. Ooh, look what's under here. <laughs> that could cause some issues. I quilted with some yarn using our sequins and ribbon foot apparently. So I got I got it in my mind that dragonfly and so I ended up doing a dragonfly shape. Because you don't have to do anything you don't want to do feather. So if you say the word feather, you'll do it, you'll have a better opportunity at making a feather shape. So feather. Ooh, it really really is working well. I'm going to do a pebble. Oh, I feel like I'm just taking too much time now. I think I would have really enjoyed making something with a solid. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop. <gasps> oh, no, I should not have used the cutting. Those little scissors can't bear that, can they? Oh, they worked. Wow. Well, I wouldn't make a habit of using your scissor, your automatic scissor cutting with this thread considering how thick it is isn't that look at that though my thread didn't break not once it didn't break it didn't break once i cleaned the machine out <laughs> and uh, so keep that in mind so mental note i'm going to tell you the settings over if you want to ever free motion quilt with our jean stitch thread that the tension was set to one so in a ratio if you're machine is normal at like five, you would take it to two. If your tension is normal at four, I took it to one. The, uh, I never lowered the feed dogs, totally forgot, which is not unusual for me because you really don't need to with the octi hoops. And I used, I bypassed the last thread guide and I used the thread dispenser to feed the thread up. And uh, I'm going to now put the other quilt under here. This is 40 weight thread and I went over and over and over it, over and over and over it. <laughs> look how perfect those stitches look. It's beautiful and it's not shiny which is nice because sometimes we don't want our fabric to shine wouldn't it be neat if that was glow in the dark oh i'm gonna have to look into that pretty sure there's glow in the dark thread i mean we sell it yeah we do <laughs> i was making a joke okay i did some quilting with glow in the dark thread not that long ago so this is the what's really neat about the octi hoops is you don't have to start in the middle and and quilt out from the middle because the the fabric is never pushed down against on the machine so you don't you're not stretching your quilt out of shape so you can bind first and quilt second it also means that you can take and you can use 
blue thread for all the Eeyores and do all the Eeyores for a large section. Changing your thread for each color only one time per section. And I generally have about 20 inches in between the rolls on either side of a quilt when I'm working. Now this is, I'm gonna honestly say I've never quilted a king size quilt with the octave. So when I'm finished with my quilt, I will be doing that for the first time. And there's no way I can do it live simply because, well, if I can do it live, I have been trying to make it possible. We'll see. It's almost like an operating room in here. So let's see what I haven't quilted. And I'm not going to use this thread or this in the bobbin because I want it to look good on the back side. If you don't want your... You don't want to have to change your thread color a lot on the bobbin. And so this is yellow. Then a white lingerie thread would be great in the bobbin because it'll pull that needle thread to the bottom and stop your bobbin thread from popping up to the top. And then it looks good on the bottom all the time. Why oh, you guys are so quiet today. Are you guys still there? Hello? Is anybody there? I hope the person that asked me this is still here. You should share a picture of your of the shirt you're making in the school, Allison. All right. You're excused. If you're sewing and that's why you're not chatting, then you're excused. I really liked quilting with that. But you can see the foot made a the foot made a difference. I took the thread out or I should have checked again to see if it was if the thread if the foot made all the difference or if it was just that I needed to clean the bobbin. I'll let you know. I'll try it again another day. It's 417. I'm officially 17 minutes over. And I'm taking the the foot off because my choice always is to not use a foot or I prefer to not use a foot. And in this quilt, I'm using the Invisifil thread in the needle because the shapes are really small. I also would go down to a 80-12 needle. I can get away with a 90-14 without making too big a hole. But if you start skipping stitches, consider your needle may be too big and be leaving too large a hole. I also used a fusible batting on this and I don't like it. I prefer the bamboo batting feel and it has enough static cling to where it behaves like it's fused. If you use a fusible batting, you have to use a foot sometimes because it just is harder for the needle to exit the fabric while forming the stitch. So I'm gonna see, I may have to use a foot, can't remember. I think I did have to use a foot with this. So I'm just looking for something that hasn't been done. So blue. I didn't do all the Eeyores. And after I do an Eeyore, I will call it quits and we will see each other again next Thursday. And what day, what time will it be next Thursday, you guys? One hour different so look at your watches right now and this is only accurate if you're watching live and this is november 4th of 2021 so if it's not november 4th of 2021 then this has nothing to do with you this is just for those watching live and right now it is 4 19 in arizona so look at your watch what time is it next week you're going to change time i won't which means I'll be on at a different time in your time zone, but I'll be on the same time as always in my time zone. So I think you're going to lose an hour. So you'll have to catch me a little bit earlier, but don't trust me on that. And you can always type into search engine, what time is it in Arizona? And know that we are always live on Thursday at two, except for Thanksgiving. I won't be live on Thanksgiving.
Invisifil. 100 weight Invisifil. I have one, but it's not the right blue. Looks like I did all the piglets too. So you can see that Pooh Bear has yellow and piglets got pink. Whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. So this will, I hate to use a brand new one, but I usually use the, the mini Kings. So they have this strand sticking out of the wrapper and you pull on it and it tears the wrapper and helps you open it up. It's such a beautiful thread. And what's really nice about it is it's super thin. You can almost barely see it. That's 100 weight. That concept kind of works. It's just not Yes, it works. <laughs> I preferred it the way they used to have it, but this is a new thing that they're doing. And that eye of the needle is so much thicker or bigger than I need for this thread, but that's not the only thing when you're looking at a needle that determines how thick a thread or how big of a needle it's the groove going down the face of it. This, this thread's gonna swim inside the size of that. And it's also going to create a larger hole than I need. If I skip stitches, it's probably the needle needs to go down to an 80-12. So this could go on top of the machine. It can also go on the vertical post and come up just as I normally do. However, I prefer to take their thread and put it on one of the posts on the top of my thread dispenser. That's what these are all sitting, why they're sitting here. And the reason is because sometimes there's little, little catches or little areas on the plastic that's rough and it makes the thread snag as as it's running through the machine if you've ever been sewing and all of a sudden your spool just kind of spun off your machine and flew across the room you know that's caused by flaws in the mold after they after you use a mold for a long period of time you have to get a new mold uh, and they they fix the mold as often as they can or as long as possible until they finally have to get a new mold so if you Hold on to your spool and you f run, run your, f your fingertip or spin it around in your fingers and you feel it catch on your finger, then that spot can catch the thread as it unwraps. So you take a fingernail file and sand it and try to make it as smooth as possible. Sometimes the sticker isn't centered and it's off a little bit and it'll catch the thread. And so ideally, this thread would be best to unwrap like that. Since a lot of us don't have that ability, I am, I was going to try something. It's an, it will be a new product for us to carry at Creative Feet. And the only reason I haven't done it yet is because it requires a vertical post. I don't have one on this machine. But I do have it on the thread dispenser. Should I give it a go? Should I test this product out? Or should I do it next week? I really don't want to open it and then, because I want to film how to install it. 
pretty sure that this is the answer to this thread and also to working with these types of spools when they have cardboard in the inside you could feed off of this but it's it's terrible the the size or the shape of the cone itself is the problem same thing with these which we want to carry but i've needed a way to deliver it to the machine so i guess this is on my agenda before next week i think it's going to be the answer so meanwhile i have it on top of the thread dispenser it's on a vertical post and it's going to spin this way to help offset those issues with your thread you can use a spool cap and put it on like that but you don't want a spool cap this much bigger than the spool it's just too much bigger it should be just slightly bigger than the diameter of the spool or it can it'll cause interference on the sewing machine as well So since I can't find my other spool cap and I have the thread dispenser, that's what I'm using. We'll see if I skip a stitch. I can certainly use the needle threader because the thread is thicker or thinner. <laughs> it didn't thread. Let's try it again. There we go. There we go. This is a new thing that I've been saying. You're obsessed with glow in the dark, Jessica? It's fun stuff. All right, so we have the quiltlets attached to the quilt and you probably wanna know how I did it. So I roll the quilt and generally I use the bamboo batting I don't think I'll ever go back to fusible batting. Never say never. That little voice in my head just said that. The quilt let's come in a bag like this. Um, it's a softer elastic than some of you may have. I'm glad you're enjoying the show. I'm enjoying being here with you guys. The safety pin size is significant, inch and a half. Tinkerbell sneezing. Oh, honey. I wish I could take you to the vet today. Oh, she's got such a runny nose. Okay, sorry, I just got worried about my dog. So we take and we fold the end of the elastic and then you poke through. And I do that because otherwise the elastic can start to fall apart. And then we pin through right here. And you flip and you can see the tip of the pin and do the same thing. Fold it. And then you close the safety pin back up. And that's how you get your, control the quilt and stop it from unrolling. And then you slide your hand inside like that. Try to do that without dragging the quilt along the tip of your needle, because that causes the needle to get damaged. And it's probably too late for this needle.
once again so bright there we go I'm going to take the larger of the two frames and put one beneath and then grab the corner with my non-dominant hand bringing those two frames together sometimes sometimes I hold like this sometimes like that sometimes like this sometimes like that so my hand moves around but the goal is to always just to bring one corner doesn't matter which corner any corner into the corner of the other and that's what locks the quilt in place and you can see how it was able to slide underneath the needle it also can slide beneath the foot now I got to find that Eeyore that needs to be done So here, Pooh Bear's done, Tigger's done, Piglet's done, and now Eeyore needs to be done. All different colors of thread, which would normally be really, really tiresome because you would do this little window and do all those colors, have to change your thread color each time. By the way, you could also go through and do little, you could go around the grass, you could do the flowers, but you got to have a small thread and a small needle in order to do that. Oh, Tinkerbell. Another th thing I need to mention is that the elastic straps, you should have level with one another on each side and the same spacing. I don't have it going all the way down because I just have been asked this question one two three four five six times and so I've been putting them on each time I'm asked to do so live and then if you don't have them parallel if one's higher than the other it'll cause the quilt to wrinkle as you're sewing so you want to make sure they're parallel so this one I just did is too close and I might accidentally go in there because I got mindless when I do this about eight inches nine inches in between each strap and while I haven't used this for a king size quilt I have done a twin and I'm confident that I'll be able to do the king size quilt we'll just have to maybe do some different tricks to make the area function better but it's certainly not the hoops that's going to limit the size of the quilt it's the table and how I set up everything else oh Amy well you know what I started the show letting everyone know that you were painting I hope it went well and you know you can watch this as soon as I end. Everybody say hey, Amy, or better days. Sharon knows your your screen name. All right, so I was going to push my phone to change cameras. That does not work. <laughs> this is when I wish I had someone to switch cameras so you could see but here we go so this is my posture and my arm is on the machine underneath here and my pinkies on that hoop it's just barely and then you just kind of pull up the quilt so this is what I'm saying the table is the biggest ob the problem with quilting once you feel like you're in the right position and know that I have my little cushion underneath my elbow. Do this. And if you can't move the quilt, then you know you're, you're sitting on it. You're resting. Something is stopping it from moving. Either your belly from it getting in between you and the table. Or you're laying your arm down on the quilt. Which is really easy to do because it's cushy and comfy. Lower the foot. 
Make sure the tension is activated on that. And I had it set for one, which is not good for this thread. Go back to four. Okay, so now I need to switch cameras. <laughs> and like I mentioned before, because this is not fe this is fusible batting, I may have to use a foot. Bring the bottom thread up. For those of you wondering why I don't lower the needle, well, if there's no foot there, you can see. Another thing you want to do is say out loud, I'd like to stay on the, uh, I'd like to outline Eeyore. If you say it out loud, you're instructing your brain. And it's more likely to help you not forget. Do not have any tails. Because those tails of thread will definitely make it harder for you. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And if I have to use a foot, I will. So I'm outlining the blue. I'm outlining the blue. Outlining the blue. And it, it was caught between me and the table. And I have some batting fuzz tickling my nose. Sorry, I thought I could wait. So now I went from this to now here. You can see how my hand is tucked under the quilt and grabbing that frame. So it's always about bringing that corner together and that makes the whole thing move even without the other hand. That's why you don't need to push down with this hand. And the top inner ring serves as a foot and if it's not enough of a hold, then you need the other free motion foot. So you have the option of using it or not using it. I would always try first. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Now, I moved my hand down to come down here but I didn't need or feel the need to move the fabric in the hoop. Stay in the blue, stay in the blue. See how I talk to myself out loud? Because the pink was, tra was attracting. Oh, you can't see it. The pink flower was attracting me, but I said stay in the blue and then I stayed in the blue instead of going around that pink flower because I wanted to. <laughs> This is why I don't tell you exactly how to hold your hand because it depends on you as to where you want to hold it. I cut the thread just now by sitting there too long. One of the hard things you'll have is you'll stop and you'll go, how do I move the quilt? Because you're connected to it. So the brain, just <laughs> it has a little bit of frustration in the beginning once you get the hang of it but you got to do it you got to not just try it once and go Ugh. once you once you get that you're not needing to hold the quilt by wearing it it's absolutely wonderful this thread has a lot of static cling sometimes that makes it Difficult for the needle threader. I feel like the thread is pulling too hard. I forgot I put it on a vertical post, which automatically I reduce thread tension because this machine is engineered for the thread to not be vertical. It's, it's engineered for the thread to be horizontal and there's no resistance on the thread as it runs through. So a three tension is uh, should I should have been using. I got away with it. We don't always get away with it though. So if I were gonna try to do it without the elastic straps, 
my fingers now have to carry the weight of all of this and it immediately will start to hurt which is your brain warning you going huh stop that if you don't stop that i'm going to fuse the joint in your thumb for you so those tendons and muscles don't have to work that hard our body's pretty lazy it doesn't want to work that hard so anytime you feel fatigue from doing something you need to stop immediately and try to figure out another way to sit so that you don't have fatigue when you're doing it no pain no gain are terrible words to to use when doing something like this pushing a button is all i have to do i did too many different things today so i'm having to think too much switching here we go all right i'll go all the way around eeyore and then pretty much Another thing to remember is that when you watch someone with a long arm, you're watching someone with a long arm machine. You don't have a long arm. You're also not being paid by the hour to quilt that quilt. So if it takes longer for you to quilt it, so be it. It's really no big deal. It's up to you. I'm starting to think she's not having an allergy. I think she might be sick. I think I'm gonna try to get her in sooner. Trying not to worry about my dog. I'm failing. Okay. We covered a lot today in uh, this, our episode 42 of season two of Fabrically Speaking Live. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. Also know that I have a free online school. It's create.clairowley.com where you will find all the people that are hanging out in here today. Well, maybe not all of them, but some of them. And you can text or type something in, ask a question. I get a text. So you don't have to wait for business hours. Sometimes I don't answer right away because I'm sleeping, but you don't have to wait as long as you would for an email, for instance. And sometimes I'm actually sitting there having dinner and you know, looking at my phone and all of a sudden it pops up and I think, oh, I get to tell her right now the answer to her query so she can get right back to sewing. And it just thrills me to know that you don't have to wait, especially if you're sewing at a uh, year in Australia and it's, you know, four in the morning or four in the morning here, but it's still nighttime there. I don't really know the hours, but then you don't have to wait. Uh, it's, you can't wake me up by the way because my phone is set in a way that does not wake me up. The only one that can wake me up is my, are my children or my father. Outside of that, everybody else has to wait till I wake up. And um, so what I covered today was making this little cushion. And now you know the purpose of the cushion for me is resting my elbow on it. If you are, if you do anything where you work a lot with your hands, and you put your elbows down a lot, that's what these are for, to support your elbows while you do your crafting so that you don't cause tissue damage to your elbow area. If you have a mouse and you work with your mouse on your computer a lot, it stops you from hyperextending your wrist, which has been known to cause corporal tunnel syndrome and other things. So this will put your wrist at the same height as your mouse and it's comfortable and not over oversized easy to move around and this is for my son and he hurt his ulna nerve recently from putting his wrist along the edge of the table while working the mouse so uh, he learned about that and I can't wait to send this off to him so that he has a solution and uh, can stop hurting himself with that I, I appreciate all the time that we spend together every Thursday and I'm gonna look really quick <laughs> Just drop scissors. I think. Can't leave scissors on the ground. It was the second pair I dropped. Hi, Tinkerbell. We're going to figure out what's going on with you. I 
I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And if I promise to do anything next week, I'll have to watch this again to see if I did promise. Did I promise anything for next week? Other than keeping up Christmas gift ideas? Wanting to know what you guys think? Feel free to let me know in the school. Because this is going to end and uh, the live will, will end as well. When I end this video, obviously. And it was helpful. It helped me decide to do this. Because last week so many of you sent me emails and uh, also comments in the school. In addition to in the feed last week on the live, that is why I ended up doing this this week, even though I wanted to do something else. I'm glad that we did it though. I enjoyed it and I enjoy working with you to develop each week's class and hope to uh, see you all here again next Thursday at two o'clock Arizona time, Mountain Standard Time. Your time right now, totally different time for next week. Remember, Arizona does not have or have to do anything for daylight saving time. So it is November 4th, 2021, and it is 446 in Arizona. And that is only true if you're watching live. If you're not watching live, I will see you next Thursday. Bye. Mwah.